Hello, hello, hello. Happy Hi. Wednesday. Yes. Me and Megan have got some cool things to talk about, but I'm gonna start off with talking about um, some things that hit the news tab. So there is a 40% off sale tomorrow on select items. We do not know what they will be. There will be a queuing system that goes um, in place tomorrow. Why does it keep telling me my hand's raised? Um, there will be a queuing um, that goes on in the, at one o'clock. Um, remember, don't hit refresh because you will lose your spot. Just be patient. Um, I just make sure to keep my phone awake. Uh, it'll be go to this, your website, your PWS, go to the specials tab, and the sale will pop up there. Um, the Mickey Celebrate Christmas Warmer, what is it called? What Christmas with Disney Warmer starting, it'll be one o'clock tomorrow. Um, it is $100, 85 PRV. It does come with its own scent. Uh, the scent can be added to your Scentsy Club. It is $6.50, just like any licensed bar, and you get six PRV for it. The up warmer and the limited time offer warmer are still available. They have not sold out. All of the Alglo, or however you say that, warmers have sold out, but I have heard some rumors that they are coming back. So keep an eye on your product status list. That does get updated regularly. Um, Gordy, the gnome Scentsy Buddy with your choice of scent pack is being released tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna go with at one o'clock with the flash sale. Um, the Haunted Mansion, if you missed out on the Haunted Mansion Disney Warmer, it will release, um, re-release tomorrow. All of these are why supplies last. Johnny Appleseed Counter Clean is getting turned back on. It is finally back in stock. The Just Breeze Scentsy Pods will be back in stock tomorrow. The Narwhal Scentsy Bitty Buddy in the scent of Very Merry Cranberry is coming back tomorrow. The Snowman Scentsy but, uh, Bitty Buddy is coming back tomorrow, or releasing rather. Um, if you don't know what a Bitty Buddy is, we did have them last year. They're gonna be like a little ball. I have one in my kitchen. I'll go get it when, um, in a minute when Megan's talking, I'll go grab it. Um, so those are really, really good stocking stuffers. And I believe they're $10. Megan, am I correct? Or are they 12? There's one. That's the elephant bitty buddy. Super I cute. I think they're it's, 10. I'm pretty sure they're 10. Squish them so they can see him come back out. So you can squish him. He's like a mushmallow. And then he will pop back out. Um, I hit my husband with them all the time. So disclaimer, they can be a weapon. Um, the Southern Hospitality Lid is getting turned back on tomorrow. Palm Trees and Ocean Breeze Bar. So I'm guessing if it's in your club or um, if you have any orders that, you know, didn't get shipped with it, those will come in stock tomorrow. And then the Bali Dish and Lid come back in stock tomorrow. Um, it does say that the Holiday Oil 3-pack, they are not anticipating it to be here until early December. So... It does in the product status list say the Aglo, all Aglo, however you say that, mini, uh, medium white warmer. Um, it, they're expecting them to come back into the warehouse on 1216. That is after shipping cutoff. They, um, it says back orders being fulfilled after for, and then available for purchase after. It looks like the small gray one is 1223. Um, back orders being fulfilled, purchased after. I don't see anything about the green one. I don't think you see anything about the green ones. The cotton cleanups are still on to be determined. I wish they would come back. Um, Olaf, Olaf Cincy Buddy Clip. They are expecting it to be turned back on on 11.25, but they're going to do back, order, um, back orders first, available for purchase after that. So make sure that you're keeping a close eye on the product status list. 
that they update that. Megan, is it every Tuesday they update that or is it, I think it's just once a week, right on Tuesdays? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just on Tuesdays. And then every once in a while, like um, Thursdays, they'll tell us like something too that's coming that following Monday, maybe. Absolutely. Right? Love that. I think so. I think so. But I check it every day just in case there's a little something gets thrown in there that I'm, you know, wasn't expecting to be there. And it's like a little nugget. So, um, yeah, reach out to your customers. Um, I've been marketing the gnome buddy since it came into the little cat, like the little pamphlet thing. I'm, I'm a collector of gnomes. So I've been marketing it and just letting people know like, Hey, when this releases, you know, if you want one, like, get with me and I'll write your name down and I'll get the money before he releases. Um, so I do have two sold. Um, it's two more than I would have had if I didn't. Right. So sometimes if you know stuff's coming in the future, um, I never give a date, even if it says a date on there, I don't ever give a date. Um, I just say, Hey, if you're wanting this, get with me and I'll let you know when it does officially release to get payment. You can only hold payment for what is it, Megan? 10 days, 15 days, five days. You can only hold payment for five days. So keep that in mind when you do bundles, keep that in mind for anything. You can only hold someone's money for five days. Uh, I think that's all of the news. Do you have anything um, news wise, Megan, that you wanted to add? No, ma'am, I think you covered pretty much all of it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So tonight, what we're going to talk about is how to make it where you are not spending this business should not require you to work eight hours a day i mean that that is not what we want you doing because that nobody wants to do that right this is like a on the go type of business to where you know you do have more freedom to be able to work your business around your life versus you know i have to go and sit down and work from this hour to this hour and it be four eight ten hours a day like that's just crazy so we want to give you some tips that we do and then i'm also going to pose the question how many hours a day do you work your business um that and i want the total number for the whole day so i mean if it's five minutes here five minutes there like those add up so when we're not when I'm going with most of the time, none of us sit down and work for seven hours in a single day. Um, but I am interested to know how many hours a day do you work your business? Um, is your business open seven days a week? That is a like question. If you don't know the answer, think about it. Like, like is your business open seven days a week? How many hours a day are you putting in? Um, and that might be like a reality check for some of you. Like I had to do that when I first joined and I was like, okay, if you think about how many hours I'm working versus the money I'm making, I'm not making shit. And that isn't good. So I started working smarter, not harder to where I am not having to spend so much time um, doing fluff and different things like we talked about last week. Um, especially now that I'm back to work, working 40 hours a week out of the home. I cannot come home and then work five hours a day with Sensi. Like I can't do it. So I still have to run a successful business, but in time saving mode. So that's what we're going to talk about. Megan, do you want to start us off? Sure. All right. So I, okay. At the beginning of every catalog like transition, I do spend maybe four, three, four hours on, um, prepping my new scents that have come in. I always get them early so that I can, um, you know, sample them. Actually, as a matter of fact, last time I did not because I earned the incentive. And so it took a really long time for some reason for us to get the, the little, um, we got warmers and a couple of other things. But like That's because they have to go through audit. So now oh, you know okay. for in the future and if anybody else was to ever earn an incentive in the spring or summer where you get product kits, you will not get them before the stuff releases. So I always go ahead and still order the scent one um, so that I do have them in time. Amen. Um, so yeah, so I'm doing that. And then what I do is I put them into baggies, okay? I have hundreds of baggies, okay? With samples in them. So that way, I can grab and go. I also have like our main ones that are in like body, 
um, laundry, like for example, Cloudberry Dreams, right? It's in a ton of products. I want this at ready to go, whatever. It's a felt sample. I have them in molds from when I used to do molds. And then I just have chunks in here too. Okay. So I know like which way I'm mailing them, whatever. Also they're labeled. Like even my samples get, get labeled um, in case they give them to somebody, you know what I mean? For whatever reason. So, and then when my scent of the month is done, it goes in another one of these little totes. Okay. So this one is vanilla blackberry. It's in this little container thingy. And then can I flip this around? Anyway, here, it's in this little thing down here. Okay. Okay. Well, in. whatever you just oh. did, we can't see you anymore, but hold yes, on. you can hold flip on. your camera around. Well, I don't know how to. Oh, there's a button up here. Cool. Yep. Okay. Got it. It's out of my way. Bam. Okay. So that is that. You froze. You froze. Flip us back around and show us what was in that bin. But like, give it a second because whenever you move your phone, I feel like it freezes. Let me see there if I go. connect back to my Wi Fi if it's any better. Story of my life right now, guys. I'm so sorry. Okay. So this is in a whole container of nothing but samples. I put them in little Ziploc baggies. Some of them are in these little small proof ones. Some of them are in just like plain ones. You can see I literally wrote on these ones, butter pecan, because I didn't have any stickers. And then they also go into these little containers too. So if they are classic scents or like not all the classics, like the ones that I have classic, or if they're available in all of our products, body, um, everything, you know, body, laundry, etc. So like I have aloe water and cucumber. I have cloudberry dreams. I have Amazon rain. I have black raspberry vanilla. Um, they go into these little totes. So that way I know I can grab and go. I know which tote I'm looking for. And then the rest of the time, if I'm sending a sample to somebody, I can pretty much just grab a baggie out of this little container and figure out which one I want to use, figure out which one I want to use, um, you know, to send a sample to them. Okay. Um, so I have that um, to organize my life a little bit. It gets, you know, pushed back and is out of my way for the most part. And that's that. Um, so at the beginning of every catalog, I do all of the new scents. I literally just use my little thing. I don't ever use molds anymore. Yes, they look very cute. They look very neat, but I don't think I've ever seen a customer of mine take a picture of a mold that still looks like the mold that I sent them so with that being said it's just not I don't know it just it took me a long time okay um and then as far as bulk sample like mailing I it's so like right now I have four thank you things ready to go okay so example I'm trying to find one with the consultant thing in it hold on all right, so I think this is it. Okay, so in my thank you mail, I do a product status sheet because it is flat, folded into fours, and bam. I do a flyer sign of the month with a little sample staple to it. I make sure that this is as flat as I can possibly get it. I also always include top 10 reasons to join Scentsy. Sense of the season, I just recently threw these in here. I made myself a little flyer and I printed it out on, this is a photo. I don't print them out from my house because it, it's cheaper for me to send it to Walgreens, print it out and go and pick it up than it is for me to utilize cardstock, um, go on Avery and make them the time that it's taken me and then the ink and whatever else. So, um, and then a handwritten thank you. Oh, this isn't the one. Though. So this is like a handwritten thank you note. And then on the back I have, Love it, share it, brag about it. I'll write down there. Don't forget to tag me for an extra goodie. And then my little QR code, okay? But I also have these ones from the consultant store, which were like, I don't know, I think I got like 50 of them or 100 of them. I have a ton of them. Thanks, whatever little thing. If you want to write thank you notes, I also, when I'm like giving them their thing and I didn't already like write, you know, stamp my stamp on here like this, I will put my stamp up higher and just write my thank you note on the back of my scent circle. I will never buy another pack of thank you cards for the rest of my life. This will be what I'm doing from now on. Um, so that is that. I usually have, I try to always have at least 10 
thank you bundles ready to go. Um, and then I can, I don't put the scent circle in them until I see my customers order. And then I put the scent circle in there because I never want to, like, let's say that they ordered six bars of Luna. I don't want to send them a Luna scent circle on accident. I want them to have a new scent. I want them to experience something different. Maybe that's similar, but something different. So I throw that in at the end. I also have bulk hostess. And so things. with the with the thank you mail real fast, when I also do everything in bulk, because that's going to make it to where your time spent working daily is going to be brought down significantly. You're going to go, if you're having to pack up thank you mail, like you're having to make it from beginning to end, then put the address on it, do the thank you note and do that. And you got five orders that day. That's going to take you, you know, there goes a half hour, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour, depending on how fast or slow you are. I personally try to do enough thank you mail to get me through the month. And I try to do them when I get. So on the 15th, we order our scent and warmer of the month. As soon as I get them in, that's when I try to do the next month's thank you mail. It's also like a little goal of mine to get rid of all of the thank you mail that I have made up so that I don't have to add the flyers to those. It's just like a little challenge for myself, but that's what I do and I bulk them up. So I do more than 10 at a time because I don't like ever to not have any. So being sick in October wiped me out where when I came back from being sick and had to do all of October's thank you mail because we were sick, I was completely like, I, I've yet to get back ahead. I need to do that. But I try to have at least a month in advance out and it's going to challenge yourself to like, oh, I still got three thank you mails. I need to get out. I need to get three orders, you know? So I think that that is really nice. And it's going to serve, like you may spend more time like that, that day that they come in and I may spend an hour and a half to two hours bulk doing thank you mail, getting um, hostess packets, which Megan's getting ready to talk about. Um, party packs, if you do those, um, the sin of the month samples, if you do those, um, that day that the flyers come in or the day after the flyers come in, depending on my days, I might spend two, three, four hours. That's the day where I'm going to spend a chunk of hours getting things ready. And then I don't have to spend multiple hours again until the next bulk day. So it, that is why it's so important to get ahead because it's going to save you so much time on your day to day. Go ahead, Megan. Let's see those hostess packs. I have a question. Sure. Okay. Uh, do you put the top 10 reason in every single thank you mail? So if the same person orders from you two or three times yep. in one month, do you give it to them every single time? Absolutely. Yeah. Because they say, I have heard this so many times, but I've heard it from uh, all of our all of our people up above and not only just from them, but like my brothers even say this and they're in like marketing and stuff like that. It takes a person an average of seven times to see the same thing, to hear the same thing before they fully even absorb it and acknowledge that it exists, okay? So like that you need to keep sending it to them, send it to them every single time. And they might just throw it away every single time and that's okay. But one time they're going to look at it. Eventually it's and if they're ordering and they're from you three times in a single month, they need to be a consultant and you need to be telling them why. Um, <laughs> three times have, in a month is crazy. I, well, I just closed a, what she have? Oh, well, it was over a $500 party. Um, I literally just got her stuff in yesterday. Um, her order was, or her stuff was pretty much, her rewards was pretty much from her. But she ordered a lot of the Nightmare Before Christmas and that kind of stuff. And I just opened another party link for her. My neighbor, sorry, I just ate cheese. My okay. neighbor has a running shopping link all year long. Like yeah, every three months, what, she starts a new one. I think that's what but she, she doesn't want to be a consultant, and that's okay. But make sure that you are communicating the benefits of that okay I will work on that but yeah she would be somebody that I put that card in every single time for sure 
Um, okay, so then when I have hostesses of parties, I do more for them. And this does take me a lot of time. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, I'm not hours. Um, Monday, I was home from work and I sat here from, I think from 12 to like 1.30. And then I ran to the grocery store. I came home and then I went and picked up my kids. I came back and by, I want to say, okay, so like we're talking like maybe three, maybe two hours total, maybe a total of two hours. Okay. But I made six of these. I have two that I had to send for this week. Um, and then I already sent one out for the following week. So that way she already has it, but I am literally doing my, I give them a catalog. They get a whole catalog, my stamps on the back of it. I go through and I put a scent sticker on every single page. If I didn't, not every single page, almost every single page. Okay. Like a scented rub and sniff sticker. If I did not have that many stickers, I would just put in what I did. Okay. Like I would just put some throughout the catalog, but I would put them like randomly throughout. And then I give them a card that says, um, hold on, let me see. I forget. Let me see. Oh, there it is. Then they get a little card like such. Says you are amazing. Okay. Um, it was literally a picture that I printed out. Um, and it's actually, they were postcards. So I have one postcard left. These used to be postcards that I got from like a tribe box or something like that. I keep this one just to be able to like print it off again. But, um, I get, I give them this, I write them a little handwritten note saying, thank you so much. Hope you enjoy the samples. Make sure to share with your friends and family, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. They also are getting the top 10 reasons to join Sensi. They're getting a scent and warmer of the month flyer. You can tell how old this one is. This still has an October set and warmer of the month um, flyer in it. Um, and then I pick samples out. So like this one, I already had bagged up. It's a clean laundry and body scents. So every sample that I have in the clean laundry and body scents is in this little baggie and she can go through them and smell them. Um, Blue Grotto, Squeeze the Day, um, Cozy Cardigan, Ella Water and Cucumber and Blue Grotto. Anyway, there's like five, five samples in here. I don't want to give her so many samples that she doesn't need to buy wax. You know what I'm saying? But I give her enough. Then I throw this in here. This says Harvest Collection Clean Bundle Scent. Don't miss out. This is an LTO. Okay. It's a uh, red pear and pomegranate. And I handwrite these things. I don't, I don't, I'm not printing all these out on stickers. To be completely honest with you, I'm not that technologically savvy yet. Okay. I can print some stuff out, um, but nothing crazy. Okay. And then they either get a body sample of some sort. Um, this is the Scentsy Soak. They get, I have some that are like um, laundry, body, whatever from the Scentsy Consultant Store, but I found that it is much better for me to get the PRV and make the samples myself, spend two hours making just body samples, spending two hours just making um, these little thingies, which it does not even take that long. This is a flat way to send your towels or your um, Scentsy Clean counter clean so nope. it has my information on it and then i just hand wrote remove towel and use on any solid surface literally liquid gold scent is squeeze the day this is our counter clean don't forget to try it literally there's a little towel in here it's folded these are dry and then when i'm ready to use it i literally just take my little spray bottle and spray it right into the bag seal it shut don't do a ton because it will foam out and it will get all over the place so yeah um and that, and is, that is an amazing way of mailing that's an amazing way to mail counter clean samples, even if you wanted to put those in like that be the sample that you use for the month because um, they mail flat. Yes. Yes. So you can put and them the in towel like comes regular, from regular, Amazon. Regular flat. Yes. Um, yes. This is what I use for my party packs, um, but this is on Amazon. They're called Scott's towels or something like that. I think it's I paid Scott's five bucks for a something. huge yeah, scotch break. That's what it is. I have a roll of it around here somewhere. I'll grab in a second. Um, oh yeah. And then they get a piece of candy. I have an entire bag, like literally a ton of candy. Lately I've been doing terrible, whatever, gummy bears. People like gummy bears. I just throw one pack in there. If I know that they have kids, I will like literally hand right on this little thingy, like, um, you know, included two extra bags of gummies for your little girls. Hope they enjoy. I got these for around Christmas. 
Like I just grab things while I'm out. And then if I don't use them, me and my kids are going to eat these or somebody will eat them or I'll use them for something else. Um, yeah. I love that. So that is what I'm doing for that. Um, party packs. I am mailing flat. They are basically like my, I'm not doing party packs anymore. Um, I did use them for my messenger party um, because I wasn't sure how it was going to go. And every person that got a party pack did order. When I do my party packs, I'm sending them in this bigger envelope so that I can include a showcase brochure with stickers on it versus, um, you know, like a whole catalog or whatever, or just a product status sheet. Like this looks like you're getting a little bit more. Um, and then they're getting the same things. They're getting the flyers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then my random happy mail. My random happy mail also is, is in this. It is bulk made up, but because I'm like sending them to people, like when I'm, I'm choosing five can people you every single month. Yeah, I can now. You were, you were frozen. Oh, all right, Megan has the worst luck with her internet. The last thing that I heard was that like, that hold I heard on, clearly. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Like, hold on. Hold on. I don't think it's Megan. You did it freeze for me. Oh, it didn't freeze for you? Really? Oh, it's you, no. Kirstie. Ha! Huh. That's a first. Well, that's really bad if I'm the person that is doing the recording and it's freezing. I've never had fine, mine though? freeze before. Even when you were just talking, you sounded like a robot just a minute ago. Yeah, my... yeah you did for me too, but I thought that I did. Yeah. yeah. Okay, proceed. Let me see what okay. I can figure out. Okay, so anyway, so yeah, so same thing for my random happy mail. I'm choosing five people every single month who have not ordered in a while. I'm utilizing this envelope. I'm sending same thing, um, a showcase brochure. And I send a pixie stick. They get literally one little pixie stick. I also throw in some glitter in these ones. Um, mine have already been sent out for this month, so I need to make new ones. And then I send out the same thing that you are amazing. Um, you know, some or it's or it's a sample time, it's sample time little cards like such from the consultant store. Um let me grab them like this. Okay. One of these two, I'm sending out something like that. Usually it's sample time, whatever. Um, and then I also use our laundry, um, you know, like our, like our flyers that are for, what the heck did I just do with my, oh, here it is. Um, you know, like our, our body flyers our laundry flyers, our cleaning flyers. I will send one of those in, um, in with the Happy Mail, with the product, with the brochure sheet. And then I put in this, this little card, okay? Gretchen made these for me, okay? It says, need more wax? Scan me. And it looks cute. I've made some new ones that I'm gonna try and print off myself. Um, and then I have this, join Sunsea Club flyer, yada, yada, yada. And that's all that I'm putting in my, um, like happy mail. I will tell you that, um, if I find, okay, so example, last couple of weeks ago, I had seen that one of my customers that had come to my very first and only home party had just returned from a cruise or she was getting ready to come back from a cruise or she was on a cruise. She was on the cruise at the time with the hostess of my party of the home party and with a friend that also attended the party. So I had three by the sea sun circles. I grabbed those. I hand wrote on the back of them. Um, super it's something like, Hey, Stacy, can't believe it's been a full year since, since Christie's party. I'm I can't remember, I don't remember exactly what it said, but something along the lines of that. I like, cannot believe it's been a full year since Christie's party. Totally just saw on Facebook that you're on a cruise with her. I'm so jealous, but I'm happy that you guys were able to go. You guys look like you really enjoyed yourself. Hope that you enjoy this by the sea scent circle too, and that it can remind you of the ocean and your time on the cruise. Bam, done. That was it. I did not include a product status sheet. I did not include a 
um, any kind of flyers. I just hand wrote that scent circle and, um, and that was it. I, I, it was just a scent circle. And like, maybe I could have wrote it like, a, or maybe I wrote it on a piece of paper or something like that. Um, you know, something like that. I have these little things that like, say like my name. And when you're doing little... it that way, I feel like, I feel like when you're doing it that way, Megan, like how you said, like you didn't include a product status sheet. You didn't include like, if you need anything, let me know. Like when we nope. talk about building relationships, that is what we're talking about. She's seen something. These three that, you know, did a party for her last year went on a cruise and scent is a big thing to trigger memories. And she just gave them a scent that may trigger their memory of that cruise. And you never know, it might go somewhere or it might not. But regardless, those people know, wow, she's paying attention to me. She's built that connection. Yeah. I mean, she ended up messaging me. Um, well, I sent it to all three of them. Okay. So one of the, one of the ladies messaged me, thanked me, told me that she appreciated um, me thinking of her and um, that she hopes my family and I have a really happy Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, another one, the hostess of the party, who's also my son's, uh, my youngest son's best friend's mom. So like I'm seeing her pretty regularly. She's ordering off me pretty regularly. She was like, that was the sweetest thing ever. I just love you so much. Like no wonder your little Cammy's so stinking sweet. Like you're the best. And I need for you to come up. I need um, some little bundles for my sisters for Christmas. Can you get me together some bundles? It needs to be like between 20 to $25. I'm like, okay, cool. So, and then the other one I have not heard from yet. And that's okay. Maybe I won't hear from her. Um, maybe I will. If not, regardless, and, you know, sometimes it is kind of like one of those things like, dang, man, I took time out of my day. I spent my money on that stuff. I spent my money on mailing it to you. Like a simple thank you would be really cool. However, if you don't say, if they don't say thank you, that's not the point. The point is, is that you did it. I feel like something has changed in me where I don't, I'm not worried about making the sale anymore. I'm worried about serving my customers and my team and my people and even if they're not my customers and they're not my, and they're not, you know, my team or my upline or whatever, all that, I just want to, when I help others, I feel fulfilled, right? And so that is my new intention is being of service to other people, sharing really cool things, tips and tricks and um, being intentional about things, being intentional with my time and, um, and who I put energy into. And it's okay if I don't get that back. I know that it probably brought a smile to her face and that was really cool, right? Period, amen, that's it. That's all it has to be. So um, yeah, I think that that's it. That's all that I have to say about bulk sampling, I'm pretty sure. I, what else I love everything that you said. I think that that, I think you nailed bulk sampling. I think we talked about why it's so important. Um, I will say when you're first starting out, don't feel like you need to sample everything um, because at the end of the day, like you don't, like you don't need to be spending your whole paycheck on mailings. And if you start having all of these samples and run out of money to mail them, then, you know, you've kind of like wasted a bar if you cut it all up or, you know, soaked it all up with felt. So don't feel like you have to do all of the things um, the stickers are a really good option. They come every catalog change. You can buy like all of the new scents and stickers. I do highly suggest um, putting the money in and getting those. Like Megan said, she puts them through the um, catalog. I don't believe we're, are we not getting stickers anymore with the warmer and scent of the month? Or are we no, still we getting are. Those? Yeah, we're we still, getting, still getting, getting those. We're, we're yeah. losing a bar and a room spray, right? No, <clears throat> just a room spray, I think. No, we went from nine Maybe to eight bar. bars. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, so um, you're going to get, anytime you get the scent or scent and warmer of the month, you're going to get stickers from that. Utilize those stickers. Even if it's the scent we don't have anymore, I'm betting that we have one that is like it. So I think that that is <clears throat> really nice that, you know, it's still getting a scent under their nose. I'm not somebody who sends a ton of samples out because I wasn't seeing a big return on samples. Um, so I don't now one re the reason why you wouldn't receive a return on samples is if your follow-up game isn't good. 
So I think that that's what we should um, segue into now. If you are sending out samples, I don't care what the sample is. I don't care if it's a scent of the month. I don't care if it's something from the catalog. I don't care if it's wax, counter clean, washer whiffs, whatever, because you would think you get something in the mail, <clears throat> you smell it, you try it, you would reach out to the person, hey, thank you, I got that. Or, hey, I really like that scent. People don't think that way. And if you are not reaching out to them to see if they liked it or something, they're not gonna, nine times out of 10, they're not gonna reach out to you. Um, at least in my experience, you have to be reaching out to them. Another thing that I'm going to tell you guys, if you haven't experienced this yet, I hope you don't, but you probably will. You're going to have somebody, if you say, who wants a sample, they're going to be that person that says yes every single time. And you're going to mail them a sample. And then I have met, you know, reached out to said person. Did you like that sample? Yes, I loved it. Um, and then, you know, something along the lines of, would you like me to add some to my next order for you or whatever the case may be? I don't segue straight into that, but I get to it. Oh no, I can't order right now. Now, sometimes that is like, that's understandable, but this person did it to me about six or seven times in a row. This person no longer gets samples from me because, you know, I've now spent $15, $20 in mailing over the, all of these sample times, plus my time and energy and making the samples. And a bottom line is this person's probably never going to order. Um, you can continue to send samples to people like that. I'm just uh, not going to do it um, because it was just a really big waste of my time. And it was frustrating me and anything that is causing you frustration or anxiety or anger or sadness or whatever get rid of it uh, if it's not working. So I don't do a whole, whole, whole lot of sampling. Um, I go about things in a different way. Uh, a lot of people have a ton of success with sampling. I just happen to not be one of them. And it could be because of my follow-up. Um, you need to be keeping a log of what you are sending who. If someone says they would like samples, well, if you have like how Megan has tons of samples of different things, she needs to be keeping a log to know what she sent that person. Because you don't want to say, how did you like the Scentsy Soak when the Scentsy Soak wasn't in there? She sent the, the body lotion and the hand cream instead in that one or whatever. Or how do you like that scent when that's not the scent you, like you sent them? So Megan, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I just want to share. I'm not going to share the one that's filled out because I write the people's addresses on there because I'm a pen and paper kind of a gal. And um Okay, so that's why. But this is a blank one. I think this is um, Christina Stainbrook's like simple it's on the files or tab of our yeah, it's on the files yeah. tab of our um, team page. Okay, so it says random happy mail name, what was mailed, date sent, the cost that it cost me. Well, I never write that down. Okay, even though I probably should, so I know. Um, and then reason for mail or gift. I literally write down um, one Facebook party. I write who it was. Alana's party winner sent circle game whatever okay that's what I sent her then winner mom's party winner mom's party when winner Kirsten's party guess the testers winner Kirsten's party sent circle you know what I mean so that way I even know like what games they won so when I do follow up I can say something that is very personal to that like hey girl did you enjoy that scent circle that I sent you for winning the scent circle game like isn't that crazy that there were 166 of those that made up that palm tree whatever yeah. You know, somebody made that picture with 166 of them or something like that. But I like to remember who they were, what party they were in, why I mailed it to them. Um, I like to remember those things. So that way, when I am messaging them, it's not a cookie cutter text message. It's a personal text message, you know, uh, or a Facebook message. I also am getting into voice messages, which I have never mm -hmm. been into before. I don't like the sound of my voice. It bothers me very much when I listen back to it. Like, I swear to God, I don't sound like that. Okay. But like <laughs> I do, obviously. Okay. But, um, I have been doing the, like the voice messages and I, nobody's voice messaging me back and that's cool, but they get to hear my voice and mm -hmm. maybe they haven't heard it in a year or maybe they've never heard it before. You know what I mean? And so then they're like, oh, wow, and I know this. And it's something different. 
Like it's exactly. something different that most people don't get voice messages. So right, exactly. I think that it's a nice personal touch. Yeah. Um, it's been working so far. It's been, I mean, I don't know if it's working or not. I feel like it's working. It's, okay. You, you just do that on messenger. You just send them one of those uh, voice messages. You can or also you can do, do it. it on, yeah. You can do it on your text you too. On, yeah. Huh. Um, Never done it. I'll have to show. Yeah, I'll have to show you. I have my phone right here. Let me show you. Yeah, I was gonna say show her how to do it. You just go like, um, like you're going to text message. Like you're gonna send a text message, right? And you just come down here, and you see the little circle at the end right here. You just hold this down, and now it is listening to me. Hang on. It's not gonna listen to me because I don't like I have my earbud in here but it'll listen to you and you'll see it that it's listening. And then um, you just, you just push send and it sends and it'll send the little voice. I'll send you one in a second. I was going to say, I was going to send her one too. That's so funny. I was like, don't worry, Teresa. I'll send you one girl. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, But I, I keep record of everything I have. I have random happy mail. I think I've showed you guys my binder before random happy mail. I have um, love brag tag and um like who who they were what date they they tagged me in a post where they tagged me at and what they showed on there and then at the end of the month like I go through and I pick a random person and I send them like a car bar or a bar of wax or something random like that and I tell them like this is being sent to you because you were the winner of everybody who tagged me on posts for this last month and whatever like the eight, eight people tagged me on post and you won this time. I kind of like to make it a competition because I used to be trying to send everybody a car bar and yeah, it was just kind of, first of all, it was a lot. It was expensive for one, for two. Um, yeah, I think it cost me like six bucks to mail a car bar. I'm not even kidding you. Um, but regardless, so I mail, um, so the car bar and then Oh, and then I like to make it a competition. Like the more that you tag me, the more entries that you get, right? And like my people on my Facebook VIP group, I tell them when I'm sending them their happy mail, don't forget to tag me for extra goodies, for chance to win some extra goodies. Um, you know, I'm letting them know like it's a competition, you know? And then I try- And I love that because that's like a referral program. Like when people are sharing the, the, the items and tagging you on their personal Facebook, all of their people are seeing it. So that's almost like you're running like a referral program. Basically, it's just worded differently. So I absolutely love that. That's really good. I do that with my scent crates. See, it doesn't feel like a referral program to me, but you're right. It is. It is. I didn't even like realize that it was, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It definitely is. Um, and then now, how would you approach... Yeah. How would you approach, say you sent samples to somebody, let's hear your follow-up from it. Give them an example. (coughs) You just sent me, you sent me a Cincy Soak sample and a counter clean sample uh, (coughs) and um, two, like the warmer of the month, like the scent of the month sample and then a random one from the catalog. Tell me how you're going to message me about my package. Okay, so I'm very intentional about what I'm sending to people. For example, somebody posts on Facebook that they're trying to get these shoes clean. Please give me recommendations. I send them a counter clean thing, right? So I'm Mm -hmm. starting off with something very personal. If I just pick a random person to send something to, I am following up with saying something like, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to think like, Cause like, I'm intentional, like even with that, um, like with that going on the cruise thing, you know what I mean? Like she was a random person. She went on the cruise, bam, my sense was something, but I would probably say, let me find one. Let me just find one. And I'll read it to you guys. I'm say, have you had, to... you, so you don't ever I mean, put I said, it out there. Like who wants, who needs samples? No, like, do you God, ever, no. I no. did that. No, I've done that. that. I've done terrible. it too many times. Yes. yes. Done it too many times. Um, Let's see here. Trying to find. Oh, here we go. All right. Okay, here it is. 
So she had actually sent me a message and said, good evening, love. I'm really excited about all my samples that you sent me with my order. Thank you so much. That was really cool of you. Oh, this is like a thank you thing, right? Okay. Well, regardless. Mm -hmm. So I waited for, so that was on October 1st that she sent me that message on November 11th. So we're talking six weeks later. I say to her, oh gosh, sorry. I'm getting all these messages right now. I say to her, Hey, Felicia, just wanted to check in. Were you still loving all of your scent bars? Tell me which one your favorite was. Um, also, I'm really curious to know which one of those samples was your favorite. They were all scents that you did not choose in your, they were all scents that you did not choose in your wax, in your wax bars. So I'm just curious to know which one you liked the most of. And then like, I put like a little winky face or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, okay. Here's another one. I'm like really personal about it. Like I really am. You know what I mean? Like I'm very personal about things, but like, I, I do that because I really know these people. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I really feel like I know them and I know what they like. And I'm curious to know what they, what they did like, what sense they didn't like. Um, as a matter of fact, I just sent one to my aunt the other day and it, my, this is a perfect one. I sent one to my aunt and I said, so I know that you hated that weathered leather that you got in your six pack last time. Did you enjoy the samples that I sent her, that I sent you? Um, I included a Mr. Hero cause I know how much you like that one, but I'm curious to hear how you felt about mystery man and Luna. And she, cause she's never ordered either one of those scents, which is kind of insane. Cause she's like a diehard Sunday person. Right. But she messaged me right back and she said, Oh my gosh, I love mystery man so much. It's my new favorite. Please put it on my list every single time. Okay. So I'm, I guess I'm just like really personal about it. I don't. So you, there's never I, any like sense. Like, I, I want to know what you're saying to people you don't know. Like what, a, like, cause I feel like there's some people who okay. you know, they're expanding yeah. their customer base. So how sure. would you do it if you don't know them and you can't really be super personable, right? Sure. Someone you're yeah. just kind of meeting and you don't want to come off salesy. Like, how can you approach that? Like somebody probably, who's not close Yeah, like to not you. like my close, sure. I would probably just start it by, hey, whatever their name is, by being making it as personal as I can. Um, just curious if you got the samples that I sent you in the mail a couple of weeks ago, hoping that they made it to your to your address or whatever or something like that. Um, if I have not heard from them, right? And then mm -hmm. they'll say, yes, I got them. I loved them so much. And then I ask, like, curious to hear which one was your favorite? Or like, I just, I leave it kind of just like that, but I do try and always end it with a question so that way the conversation keeps going so that I can learn more about them does that okay. make sense and at what point um, do you see if they need anything I, I, I or do you just let like, them come I, to you yeah yeah well now I do I follow up and I'll like tell them um by keeping that conversation going and just checking in on them and seeing which ones they like so I, like, like, let's say it's been three months since they've ordered from a party, right? And they're like a random person. I will literally message them and just say, hey, so-and-so, um, gosh, what would I say to them? I don't, I don't message people like that. Like I keep my customers like kind of just keep, you know what I mean? Like they, uh, somehow we organically end up in conversation again and they end up ordering again. And the people who have not ordered from me in over a year, they're the people that are getting happy mail from me. I'm purposely finding them on Facebook and seeing what's going on with their life because they have not ordered from me in a year. And then I'm finding a reason to send them something and I'm being specific about it. I'm being intentional about it. Does that make sense? So yeah, I guess I'm not I really like following that. up. I guess I'm not really following up with somebody just as randomly. Like, I, I guess I should be for sure. Um, but I kind of just leave it like that. Like, tell me which one was your favorite one. And then maybe they say it was Luna. Awesome. Hey, did you know that we have Luna and the laundry products too? Sensei Fresh is my favorite. Or, hey, um, I'm, I have this special going on right now. Do you want to hear about it? You can get six bars of wax for X amount of, 10 bars of wax for X amount of dollars. Um, yeah, I don't know. I can't even think of anything right now. Tell me what you say to people. Um, I think that if it's somebody that's new, I try to keep it really light because you don't want to scare them off. Um, and so I'm constantly trying to grow my customer base because I never want to exhaust a single customer to the point where they, I don't want anyone to feel that they're obligated to buy all the time. Um, 
I mean, if they have an order and then like three months, then yes, you know, I'm going to reach out. How's your wax stash doing? Do you need bulbs? That's a really good one. Um, is your warmer still warm and real good or we need to upgrade your bulb? That is a really good way to reach out to people you haven't talked to. Maybe, you know, your follow-up game ain't been super strong. You've been really busy. So this person has fell through the cracks and you haven't talked to them in six months. Hey, I just wanted to check on you. See how things are going. Um, let you know that I'm here. Life's just been super busy. I keep it real. You know, life has gotten so busy this fall. Um, hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying healthy. Um, wanted to see if your wax stash was running low or um, if how your warmer's doing. Wanted to see if you needed a um, bulb upgrade or a new bulb. Um, I will normally, if they're like, I do need a bulb and I'll be like, well, I, it's your lucky day. You get a free bulb with a six pack, you know, little things like that. A bulb's what, two bucks on a, on a, you know what I mean? I'm going to make some PRV off of that bulb anyways, you know, whatever the case may be. That is a really good way to follow up somebody that you don't necessarily have a really good relationship with. Um, you know, I have a pretty big customer base. I mean, I've been doing this almost three years. So I have a pretty big customer base. So I don't have that personal relationship with all of them. Um, I'd love to, but realistically, I just don't. Uh, and then for new customers that they're brand new, um, maybe they ordered for me once. I try to get a connection and like a friendship going, but some people just don't want that. Like they was, they got a Cincy person they ordered just because they were supporting the hostess or um, I have one lady, she's in the party that I'm in right now. So the lady that I'm doing a party right now, she does a party every, every catalog change. So twice a year, she does a party for me. And there's this one lady orders from the party. She just placed a $120 order. She does it every single time my hostess has a party, but you know, she won't talk to me. She don't, I reach out. Oh, I have plenty of those. Items are okay. She doesn't want to talk to me. She probably wouldn't order if Pam, my hostess, sorry, didn't do another party, you know? So you're going to have people like that, but you do want to um, try to get a relationship with everybody. But I, I, I approach it, you know, kind of like you said, um, Hey, I wanted to see if you got your sample pack, be intentional and know what's in there. Um, hey, I wanted to see if you got your thank you mail. I could do better with that. I do kind of suck about saying, did you get your thank you mail? I, I so really suck at it. Because it's I like I get message, it was their thank you. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. So I try um, to send out my thank you mail bef like around the same time. Like if I get that email that says their order has been shipped, I'm trying really hard. If I have not already sent their thank you mail now, I'm sending it, I'm trying to get it out that day or the next day. So that way it's, it's delivered around the same time. So mm -hmm. then I can say, hey, um, just saw, just got an email from Sensi. Your package has been shipped. Expect it, you know, in the next couple of days, whatever. Or as soon as their package is delivered, I will message them and be like, hey girl, you're, you're um, or maybe not like right away or whatever, but like, you know, sometime that day or the next day, I'll be like, hey, says that your um, products were, shipped yesterday that they were delivered yesterday tell me did you have a chance to open it yet no okay cool well when you get that chance please just let me know that everything's okay in that box and mm -hmm. did you were you did you and let me know if you get your your thank you mail from me too a ton of them have been getting lost in the mail or something like that like I, I try to sound like that I'm not like fishing for them to say to me like Hey, I don't like to be salesy. I don't like to only reach out to you because I want to know how your wax stash is doing. Like mm -hmm. I've done that and I get ignored. So mm -hmm. I had to change it up. Right. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. if I do say something to them, I'm just saying, how's your warmer doing? How's the bulb doing? Um, I'm just asking them that. And then like, if they're like, dang, I haven't talked to this girl in a really long time and I need some wax. They're going to tell me I need some wax. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. I'm so glad that you reached out to me. Yes. I need a bulb for sure. And can you also put in a six pack of wax, any specials? You know what I mean? Something like that. Like that's what a lot of my customers do or say to me, but I'm messaging my people that are getting their order shipped <laughs> to them. I am messaging them. Um, 
when their order is delivered, probably the day after their order is delivered. And then <laughs> if they have not ordered, if they have not opened their stuff yet, actually, I don't even ask them if they've opened their stuff yet. Did your package get there? Yes or no? Yeah, I got there. Cool. Um, a week later, I'll message them and say, hey, girl, did you have a chance to open that Scentsy yet? That's what I do. That's exactly what I do. Hey, did your box get delivered? Cool. It was there. It didn't get shipped somewhere else. That's great. Awesome. A week later, maybe 10 days later, whatever I, the next time that I'm thinking about it is, or I'm looking at my binder and it's telling me to do it, or Amy's yelling at me to do it. Um, Amy, like our follow-up app, Amy, not like a random person, Amy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, and then I'll message her and I'll be like, hey girl, did you have a chance to open that Sensi yet? Trust me, I know there are boxes sitting all over my house too. You know what I mean? Like I just try and make it like real nonchalant. Like, uh, oh cool, you opened up your warmer. Do you love it? Um, if you have a chance, I, I send really me a picture. Use the I really, really use the, um, hey, have you had a chance to open that box yet and get the, give your warmer a, a thorough look over or whatever, UPS right. or FedEx, whatever, like make sure you know who's doing it. Or it's just say the postal service in general has been really rough on packages lately. Like that's a really good segue too. So they know that you're not just trying to like... I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of like, hey, just want to make sure your stuff's okay. Right. And that's basically what I say to them. Hey, how is everything? Everything look good? Were your warmers in one piece? Everything, you know, or whatever, like your did everything come exactly like you thought that it would? And I've had people say to me, like, Yeah, everything came. It was perfect. I love the smell of my pod, but I hated my mini fan. I don't yeah. think I don't it's working just fine, but you know, it just wasn't what I expected. I expected more fragrance from it. Okay, cool. Okay. So then what do I do? I call consultant support. And I'm like, Hey, I'm not sure if it's just a fan or really if like the office is too big or what it is. My customer's not happy about this. Is there any way that we can send her a new one just to make sure that it's not broken or, or I just send her a new one that I have in my stash, or I wait for a little bit till I have some rewards to grab one. And then I send her one or I send her mm -hmm. something that I have on hand to replace mm -hmm. the fact that she did not love that wall fan diffuser or that mini fan diffuser because I want for her to know that I care and that I appreciate her and that I am going to go above and beyond. Am I going to spend a ton of money on it? No. Why? I have four kids that I have to feed and buy Christmas and, and pay for high school that cost me my left arm and everything else. Right. But I don't need any more Scentsy stock. I just don't need it. I, I have plenty. Do I need the scents? Yes. Do I need the new warmers that come out? Yes. Will I be able to get them over time? Yes. The ones that I absolutely have to have, I'm just buying them because I need them and I don't want them to sell out. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like that kind of a mm -hmm. thing. Um, and I do use my host rewards on them and, and whatever, but a lot of the time with my host rewards and things like that, I am being intentional about what I am grabbing. Um, and even if it's a month later, like I just sent that lady a new, um, as a matter of fact, I didn't even send her a mini fan. I sent her a wall fan diffuser so she could try That's that. That's what I was going to say. I would have upgraded it to a wall yes. fan. And if they're local, I always go, can I get that, um, the mini fan back? I'm going to send it in. I'm going to send that one back. Um, I went ahead and upgraded you. Um, yeah. But sometimes I would also ask them because maybe they just want it by their computer because they are in a cubicle that doesn't have their own um, plug-in too, you know? So I don't know. That's a tr tricky one, but I would have probably upgraded her to a wall fan and yeah. been like, Hey, give this a try and see if it's going to work better in your space. Um, I love that. I've deal. had people go ahead. I got it for free. I didn't pay right. for it. I used the host right. reward. And so it's literally just, how can I serve you? How can right. I, how can we serve each other? How can we help each other? How can we, and I don't even know when this thing flipped in my mind, but something started turning and I just see things differently now. And it's just, it's freaking working. It's working. So your like mind even, even, changed. Like even your servicing mind my parties. Changed. Right. So, <coughs> I mean, it definitely helped for sure, but go ahead. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? I was going to say, you're going to get some people that will take advantage of that. Like I hate to be that, sure. that negative Nelly, but you're going to have some people that take advantage of it. That's why I always say, whatever you have to do, get that original product back. Because people then, some people, you know, you all, you, all right, who's been a waitress? You'll know. Oh, yeah. Sure. You'll have that person that always says, you know, we had a person that would come into this restaurant every week and tell me that like they would eat their food and then be like, there's a hair in it and not want to pay for it. To where the manager started taking the food out for this, this patient. Good Lord, I work in a hospital now. This customer. 
Um, so don't get taken advantage of. Set boundaries, but always try to keep your customers happy. I had someone order a six pack of mocha doodle, six of them, and then tell me that they no longer like, like they got it and it, it didn't smell like it did. They don't like it anymore. So I contacted Sensi because I was fairly new. I didn't know what to do. And they're like, okay, well, the customer can send the six back and we'll issue her any new six cents that she wants. Six cents that she wants. And the customer first told me, well, I already used um, some of the cubes, so I can't do that. So then I called Cynthia and was like, hey, some of the cubes are used because she tried to warm it and see if that made it better. And they're like, that's okay. Just send back what she had, you know, everything, including the bar that's been used because they, they don't want to be taken advantage of either. Well, don't you know that customer never sent the stuff back? And with Sensi, when you're returning something, your new product does not ship until the, the one going back sends it out, like until the, it's been, the shipping label has been scanned in by UPS. So that's to keep them safe. So always try to keep your customers happy go above and beyond, but don't get taken advantage of. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that <clears throat> I let you guys know about that. Um, so so I'm curious. Oh. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, we're at like nine, we're whatever, we're at the hour now, a little over the hour. Um, I was just curious to know if they had any questions really, or like what they're doing for their follow up, if they wanted to share, or if not, that's okay too. Yeah. But did you have something more important to say before that? Um, the only thing I was going to say is I was going to ask you about how many, how long a day do you work your business? Oh yeah. Not including your bulk day. I probably work my business for a total of, I would say it varies between 30 minutes to an hour. I, that including, um, oh gosh, I don't even know if I, to be honest with you, I don't even know if it's that much. It, like to really think about like I am cause like I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram and I'm, and I'm posting posts. But you would be doing like most that. of that stuff anyways. Exactly. Like, but instead of like mindlessly scrolling, like I'm, I'm posting in parties. Right. Yeah. So it's not like, but I, but I don't consider that like really work. I would say like, I am probably, yeah, I'm probably working for about 30 minutes a day. I at least always 30 minutes to an hour, I at least always update all of my like paper things, my numbers. I'm checking workstation for news tabs. I'm writing down the things that are coming out. Um, product status list. I'm constantly checking that not constantly, but every day I check that. And I am intentionally reaching out to my teamies on Sundays and seeing what they, they can talk, except for like the ones that are obviously like some of my best friends. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm reaching like those are that Sundays are Sundays are my, my days to reach out to my teamies to see if they want to talk to me at all this week. If they, if they need me at all this week, Hey, can we talk for 30 minutes on Wednesday this week, whatever um so Sundays you maybe put in a little bit more yeah yeah but I would say that I spend I would say I spend I would probably say I spend two hours a day one to two hours a a day I do have a bigger team um I am somebody who I mean I strive for extremely high PRV um so I would say two two to three hours a day, but I will tell you this. So I was doing a lot more and spending more time when I wasn't working full time. And I know I'm pretty sure that everybody on this call has a job. That's not just sensi. Okay. I'm pretty sure. No. Okay. Well, you're a mom. So yes, you do. So there's that. All right. And you go around with your husband to all the basketball things. So when I was just staying at home with my kids, I will say that I did probably put in more hours. um, And I did see bigger results. So I'm not acting like, you know, you don't have to do like the more you put in, the more you're going to get out if you're being mindful with your time. But I'm going to say this. So I get home, say, so Mondays and Wednesdays are the days that I try to really put in a lot of my time. So Mondays, I know I have Zoom on Monday nights. I know I have Zoom on Wednesday nights. So Mondays and Wednesdays, if there's things, especially in the winter that I have to do in my she shed, I try to do them on Mondays and Wednesdays. So I may not see my kids a whole lot on Mondays and Wednesdays. So those days I may do more towards that two to three hours, you know, work-wise because the Zoom counts as work. You are working right now, okay? So two to three hours is my max. 
Then you have what, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. I would say I spend a half hour to 45 minutes on those days. Saturdays and Sundays, maybe 15 to 20 minutes a day. Now, I do check my new state, my new workstation. Good Lord, my workstation every day, at least once every two hours. But that takes seconds. When you go pee, check your freaking workstation, you know? It doesn't take long. And the only reason I asked Megan this question and why I prompted this question is because I want you to know, I like I'm somebody last, I was last month a month before I had 4,500 PRB. I don't work eight hours a day on Sensi. I don't eat, breathe, and sleep Sensi like some people that are higher up portray that you need to. You don't need to. You can still be extremely successful. It's just with finding the right setup to make it to where you don't have to do like you just have to income producing activities. Yes, like Period. I was like talking around myself. Talk, yes, talking income to producing. people. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the stuff is done on the go. Talk to text. I mean, sometimes it ends up real wonky. You've all got my wonky talk to text, but I can do that while I'm walking from one of my work buildings to my other one. I can do that while I'm driving in the car. I can like, I'm incorporating it into my everyday life to where it's not consuming me because it's like, while I'm doing something else, I went live tonight while I was cooking dinner and talked about the release tomorrow and the sale tomorrow took me what five minutes I could get everything I needed to get across I was cooking dinner at the same time and I'm also showing other people who are watching me that I'm doing this while I do life so if you need help um, you can reach out to your sponsor you can reach out to me you can reach out to anybody that can help you make it to where if you feel like you are spending hours and you're not getting results we need to change some things and so, that's why I'm using the the voice messages I can do those in my car yeah. yep you know what I'm saying and they I don't end do up those. you don't have to proofread them after yeah, you say exactly it, after it types mine out. I don't know I if I have a bad that. yeah yeah mine I today I sent Alana one that said um find out where your ghetto instead of find out where to go I don't <laughs> anyway yeah so I love that <coughs> so does anybody have any questions? I know we that this one has run long, but we did cover so much stuff. So do you have any questions? Uh, who's Wally? Who's Wally? Who's Wally on your dresser or whatever that is? Who's Wally? Oh, that's Am Bradley's. I? No. Bradley? Sorry, I, that's what caught my eye a few minutes ago when I was like, this in the racing world is a really big honor and I have not won myself one yet but Bradley won one. So the professional racers like NHRA, they race for these and us local folk get to race for them like once or twice a year. So this is Wally. Sorry. Sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Wally. That's what, that's why that like really weird, like, oh my God, what was that that I just made? <laughs> um, what? I'm going to stop this recording. Hey God. Yeah. Thanks for joining everybody. I'm going to stop the recording.